Okay, so today we're going to continue with exercise 122. The purpose of 122 is to give you a day in class to work on your assignment 105. Uh, the hope being that you can get a lot of it done. Um, don't don't just keep working on your uh, 120 and 121s. Actually, start on your your project. Uh, read the the loose requirements for uh, assignment 105 so you can get an idea. You're going to be designing a, a cabin that's in Yosemite Valley. I'm going to show you the site in just a second. Um, it's a relatively small space. Uh, I'm asking you to draw a floor plan and at least um, at least one elevation. I'd love it if you could get all four elevations. We're still kind of playing this out because it's the first time I have an official assignment for AutoCAD. Um, I just last semester got permission to teach AutoCAD in the first place, so it's kind of new uh, and we're kind of working through it. The idea though is that you learn enough AutoCAD to be able to draw a floor plan and hopefully an elevation and that we'll learn how to bring that information into SketchUp. My guess is when you get to assignment 106 when we're working in SketchUp, your cabins are going to evolve and change a bit. There's nothing wrong with that. So you're not going to be stuck with whatever you do now for 106. You can make changes along the way. But I want you to work on creating a good plan um, and I also want you to be able to start working on your assignment rather than just copying the, the plan that I gave you. Today I am going to talk a little bit about assigning line weights, which is why the line weight guide is once again on the back of your uh, page, because I want you to at least have some uh, knowledge of what I'm trying to do. The next two classes, so after today on Wednesday and then the following Monday, will be the last two AutoCAD sections um, of the class. The assignment 105, we should double check when it's due, but I think it's due um, on the, not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday. If not that, it's the following Monday. So I have to double check the, the official due date for that. But you should have some time, uh, some lead time to work on it. Um, and if you have any questions, part of the reason I want you to be able to work on it today is that if you have questions, you can ask me. Um, we can get through it. So anyway, on Wednesday, we're going to talk about um, creating an actual print in terms of scaling and paper space and what does that mean uh, in AutoCAD. And then on uh, Monday, we'll talk about getting it from that print into Illustrator, making a few tweaks, making a few changes. I'll show you some sample stuff that I've done in Illustrator uh, to try to make the drawing look pretty, pretty presentable, pretty reasonable as a drawing. So that's kind of the trajectory of where we're going. After that, we'll get into SketchUp and we'll start working through, uh, through SketchUp using the same, hopefully the same um, general uh, design project. Uh, so anyway, today uh, for 105, first thing I'm going to do is show you the building site so that you have some familiarity with it. We'll talk through it. Um, I've pulled up exercise 122. At the bottom, there's a, there's a link to download the zip of assignment 105. If for some reason that link is not there, just reflect, refresh your page and uh, you'll get that link. Uh, when you click on it and download it, it is in a zip file. Uh, once you extract that zip file, you'll see a assignment 105 building site.kmz. This is a Google Earth file uh, that will open if you double click it in Google Earth. And it will take you on these, this great Google Earth animation, right? So we can see where we are. And we'll end up in Yosemite Valley. This is the South Yosemite Valley. If, Valley, if you're familiar with uh, Yosemite at all, let's uh, pan ourselves out a little bit here. So we can get a sense for the surrounding terrain. Okay, so there it is. We can obviously tell that it is, in fact, inside the valley. Uh, if we swing our view a little bit here, we can probably have a better shot. There we go. Uh, so we're right in here. This is Half Dome for those of you that are familiar with Yosemite. Curry Village is down in here. Uh, so we're a little bit south of that. Um, one of the great things about using Google Earth to, to preview the site information is as we get down here a little bit closer, there's a bunch of these little icons that will let you uh, see pictures that people have taken of um, this particular region. So we can look and see what the surroundings look like. Uh, if you click on a variety of these uh, photographs, you can get a pretty good sense for what's happening uh, in this valley. Uh, you have flexibility 
to pick anywhere within this valley. If you want to be uh, on the creek here, you're welcome to be on the creek. This is relatively flat. There's just a little bit of uh, topography. The other good thing is when we do collages, there's a bunch of um, um, photographs that people have taken. We can borrow these photographs and, and you can, some of them are not exactly right. Uh, you'll be able to use those as backdrops for your, your particular building site. So anyway, gives you some idea. So spend a little bit of time with this KMZ file so that you can kind of figure out what this looks like. Uh, let's spin around a little bit more. The back side here. All right, and we can zoom in a little bit more. And you can pull up some more of the, the imagery. You get the idea. Anyway, so play around, look at that. Uh, this is your building site. Uh, it can be anywhere in this meadow. Uh, if you want to creep up into the hills, I, I guess I could. Uh, that would be reasonable for me. But we're kind of shooting for this. Obviously, this is a national park. You couldn't actually build on this site. But it's a lot of good background imagery. Uh, and it works pretty nicely for an assignment. So that's where it is. Spend a little bit of time having a look at that. Uh, there's not a huge amount of terrain. Obviously, when you get to the mountains, there's plenty of terrain. But on the meadow itself, it's a very gentle slope. So uh, we're not going to be dealing with buildings hanging off the side of uh, the mountain or, or anything like that. So anyway, that's where you're going to be working. So let's shift gears a little bit uh, back into the world of AutoCAD. Um, let me make this big. And let me go ahead and open the file from last class. Okay, so I'm in model space again. Um, this is this is the file from um, a year ago, which is why the, the background, uh, the, the lines are all in green. Uh, I did them in red this year, but I wanted one that was a little bit more complete so you could see kind of how I was assigning line weights and that sort of thing. So a couple things that are, that are important to note about line weights. Uh, there is a line weight button um, that says show or hide line weights. It's a little cross with a thick like a cross, but this part of the cross is thick. Uh, if, if you don't have that, it's going to be LWT in a button. <coughs> and that will show and hide the line weights. So if I click on the button, the line weights will go away. If I click on the button again, I get the line weights again. Um, AutoCAD unfortunately doesn't show every level of line weight particularly accurately on the screen. Um, so while I do have line weights on, some of the thinner line, line weights will all look the same. Um, usually when you get below about 0.25, you don't see any line weights in, uh, in um, AutoCAD, which is a little annoying, but they will show up when you print. So on the back of this handout that I gave you, I have a variety of line weights that I use uh, in this and it gives you kind of a general guideline for, for what uh, an appropriate line weight would be. So if we look at the walls first, and I sure hope I have something that points to the walls. Yes, I do. Um, so on the wall, um, I used a 0 .40 millimeter black line. And so I have a couple options in terms of assigning lines. I can select the object, right, and I can come up here to my object properties and the second drop down, down, I can select 0 .40, right? You can see that there's a bunch of line weights listed. If, for example, I jump up to, to 1.0, you can see that the line gets fatter, right? If we go back here and we go to 0 .40, right, it goes back to where I would suggest it be. Um, if we go a little bit thinner here, you can see that after 0.30, it's kind of the last one that AutoCAD's gonna show any thickness. So these other ones will show thickness when you print it, but not in, in AutoCAD in the window itself. Um, the other thing that I have the option to change is I have the option to change the color. And so right up here, you can see that I can pick a color. And the, the counterintuitive part of this is if I pick white, it's going to print in black. It's just an AutoCAD thing. Okay? Um, if, uh, if, however, I leave it by layer, it means that whatever the color of the layer is, is going to be the color of the line. So in this case, the layer is white. Therefore, the line is going to be white because it's by layer. That being said, I can also assign line weights by layer. So if I click on my layer properties, uh, you can see that one of my options, hold on a second, here we go, 
One of my options is color, but, but I also have an option to specify a line weight. And this is usually a good strategy um, if you have your layers separated out into things like these are the walls, these are the cabinet, these are the flooring, whatever you can assign by your um, layer and then you don't have to worry about assigning to individual lines. Um, it's a little bit faster to do it that way. Uh, it generally has a little bit less control. But you can see that some of these are set at the default still and some of these actually have a default line weight assigned to them. So in this case my west elevation right, is 0 0.18 it's just the, the starting point. I can override this by assigning individual lines uh, an actual value. So it's just two different ways of doing it, but that's how they're assigned. Um, so if I were to zoom in here, right, this outer line is 0.4, as I'm suggesting. The inner line is also 0.4. There it is. Uh, this line that divides the window is 0.4. But if we look at the window itself, so these two lines, oops, pick one of these lines. Right, I have 0, 0.00, right? And if you look at the drawing, you can see that it's a really, really thin line, right? That's what a 0, 0.00 um, line is. The wi little window sill here is the same, 0, 0.00. If I can select it, there it is. Oh, come on. There we go, 0, 0.00. Okay, if, uh, let me see, if I look at this line here, which notice it looks like it's a solid line here, Okay. This is another thing that um, happens in AutoCAD. The line type is decided by uh, paper space. So, and we're going to talk about paper space later on. But when I switch to paper space and I look at uh, this particular line, see how it's dashed, right? In model space, it's not going to be dashed because the scale of the line is off. But this is set as a hidden line, and there's a third option right here. We have color, line weight, and then line type. Uh, and I can specify what I want the line to look like. Um, I tend to use hidden two a lot. Uh, it's a pretty good dash, uh, dash line. If you want a different line, you can click on other, uh, and you can click on load, which will give you any one of a thousand different lines that you can choose to use, depending on what you're trying to create. Um, so this is set at a hidden two line, and its line weight is 0.18. Um, so if we look at uh, this little chart, we can see that it's 0.18, and if we look at it, it's a little bit darker than, say, the lines here that represent the window. Right? So we're creating this hierarchy. Um, if I look at my door, which is another piece, the door itself is 0.18. Right? The door swing right, is a little bit lighter. Oops. Door swing is a little bit lighter at 0.09. There it is at 0.09. Right? And again, color is all, all assigned by the layer itself. Right? Now, there are some things that I like to show, like for example, the kitchen floor here. I want it to be very faint, right? and if you look at this, it's this um, drawing is even thinner than the little thin lines that represent the windows. So what I did is I assigned it 0.00, but then I changed the color, where it used to say by layer, I'm now using a dark gray instead of a black, right? which lightens it up. I would stick with the color 250, 251, that's about... Um, as far as I would go on those. If you go too much further into the light grays, it just will never show up uh, when you go to print it. So 251 is pretty good for stuff that you want to just recede into the background. So all of the flooring, whether it's this flooring up here or whether it's the tile floor here, uh, is all going to that color 251. Uh, and that's what here I say C251. That means it's color 251 instead of black. Um, so you get a little bit of better sense. Actually, if we're looking at this, I have a mistake. Right. There's a, one of the little window sills is too thick, uh, so let's go ahead and fix that right now. That is too thick. Um, let me select those. Select those, and let's change that to be point zero zero. There we go, and so that'll be correct next time. Okay. Um, upper cabinets. I again did a hidden two line. There it is, 0.9 is the line weight. Right, the lower cabinet base here, I tend to make a little bit thicker so it stands out. Uh, and so let me just double check, it's 0.18, so it's double what the upper cabinets are. Uh, the sink is 0 0.00, or excuse me, 0 0.09. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. No, that's about it. 
So what I want you to try to do today is to work hard on your assignment 105s, design your cabin, right? Try to create an elevation if you can. And while you're doing it, think about appropriate line weights. We can come back and continue to assign line weights, but if you think about and assign line weights as you go along, it makes life a little bit easier uh, at the end. You don't have to go back and, and assign line weights. It's kind of like, if you remember in 130, you picked up a different, you changed your lead in your pencil when you were gonna draw or darken something. You are gonna do a center line, you switched to a two H, that kind of thing. You can do the same thing in AutoCAD and it will make your drawings much better if you start to adjust your line weights as you're drawing, okay? So I'm going to turn you loose now uh, to keep working on it. Uh, my green lines here are all um, just temporary, so they're not going to show up when I go to print um, because they're on a non-printing layer, so I'm not going to worry about those line weights um, at all. I can turn those off right, or freeze the layers so that we can see. A uh, couple, couple notes about looking at the elevations here. Things that are closer to you should be thicker than things that are further away. So if we look at this side elevation, we can see that I'm using 0.30 right for the lines that are close to me um, the ground line itself is the thickest line of all uh, I should do another one of these little handouts that has the elevation on it I'll do that in the next class um, at 0 0.80 for the thick ground line um, this is closer further away it's going to be a little bit lighter so there it is at 0 0.20 right windows are going to be thinner still so the outer frame is probably thicker yeah 0.18 inner frame is probably a little bit thinner, 0 0.00, right? And so you kind of start to sort these things out as you go along, um, but I, I can help you through them as well. So um, I'm going to stop talking, and I'm going to let you guys start to work on 105. If you run into any snags or you run into any questions, please have me come over, and I'll help work through whatever, whatever it is that you're trying to work through. Do make sure you save an AutoCAD DWG of your work. Uh, and we're going to do the same publish to web JPEG of however far you get today uh, and post it to the website so that you have record of it. Okay? Any questions? No? Okay. Good.